Hello my soccer universe, let's put a cap on Portugal and Spain, although there's still some playoffs going on and it's not all quite finalized, but um, since I won't be able to watch all, all of this, I decided, okay, let's talk about that. I mean, we had this absolutely mad relegation struggle in Spain, where at the last match, the six teams tried to avoid the last relegation spot. Unfortunately, it um, hit one of the teams that I didn't necessarily want to go down in Valladolid and Espanyol also were already down uh, but they had serious 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 uh, claims that VAR was not in their favor or the refereeing was not in, in their favor uh, this is something a Spanish FA will have to look into uh, if there can be any um, changes be made um, it was also a weekend full of goodbyes with Benzema surprisingly saying uh, goodbye to the sport. We had also a big uh, goodbye ceremony for Joaquin at Betis and Ila Romendi at Real Sociedad. And Matteo Lajos in his last game also said goodbye. I've never seen a referee say goodbye, but even everyone, all the players actually applauded him. I, after all the trouble that he went to, uh, through, ever since the World Cup, uh, it was actually heartwarming, warming, warming to see you could see how his tears uh, were coming, his family was, was there. I, I haven't seen it, but I thought it was rather remarkable, but yeah, uh, more Real Madrid players also saying goodbye, um, it was a match day of goodbyes, that's all I can say. Over in Portugal, uh, we had the two titles now decided, Benfica get it over the line, Again, this should have been a title that should have been over the line. Long time, time ago, they took the time, but after a long period of waiting, I think the first time after four years, Benfica are back to winning uh, the title. And Porto can console themselves by winning the cup, which is also cool. Um, one last to the relegation struggle, I want to say, I mean, uh, we will talk about Vaya Valladolid was relegated with 40 points. 40 points used to be a magic number that you are safe. 40 points is not enough, especially in a team with 20. Because I think the 40 points uh, came from leagues where there were uh, only 34 teams. So actually needs needs to be a little bit more. Honestly, uh, this is a topic that I would like to go back into and look at it from two angles. First of all, historically, depending on the size of, of the league, what uh, points total were safe historically. And then also I would like to look into, um, you know, I have the tool of simulating if like the, the leagues are all level or if there's a little bit of discrepancy, what is a safe points total? Because I remember I once did that and 40 points were not even that, 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 that safe, especially in 20 team league. I just wanted to have that edit. But before we go a little bit further, let's uh, jump into the last round in Portugal. It was all about the title in that one. And uh, Porto actually did the job. They were helped that Guimaraes had in the second minute already a player sent and off. And then uh, before they have had already a 3 nil lead through Taremi, Otavio and Eva Nielsen and uh, Pepe Gol was disallowed. So they were cruising home. They did their job. However, at the same time, Benfica also did their job uh, getting also a 3-0 win and that's why I guess Porto then stopped it in the second half and potentially focused only on uh, going forward in the uh, cup uh, final and it was Gonzalo Ramos in the 7th and then Rafa Silva in 28th and the Grimaldo penalty seals the deal Benfica are the champions uh, and they're so with two points uh, ahead of Porto. As I said, it took much longer than it should have been because Benfica really, really enjoyed a big lead. Braga go in the uh, Champions League qualification uh, playoff and Sporting will go in the Europa League and Aruca is in and Vittorio Guimaraes also go into the playoff. Aruca is probably one of the surprises of this season. And then we had the cup final where I was kind of hoping that Braga do some damage against Porto. Um, I have not really seen much, but what I see here uh, match is that Porto wins with two second half goals. The first one is an own goal by uh, Braga star Orta in the 53rd minute. Then uh, Vendel gets sent to send off for a serious, serious foul, however, Nierkate also uh, probably for kind of a last man uh, foul. And then Otavio in the 81st minute 
makes it uh, two nil, and so Porto are your uh, Tasa de Portugal winners. That is actually a trophy. I think the league trophy in Portugal is ugly as can can be, but the Tasa I actually uh, really like. I think that that's a nice trophy. And so let's uh, put a cap on Portugal. You see here all the um, uh, the summary. As I said. We already summarized who is going where. We still have the last relegation spot to be decided. More on that in just a sec. But we can also see here on the right the comparison uh, between preseason expectations, the actual points, and we see that Braga and Aruka definitely the big surprises. Whereas the teams on the bottom are the losers. Gil Vicente actually a non-relegated team that was a loser. And we can also do the same thing when we compare the points totals based on the ratings ahead of the season at the end of the season so we, we see the change in the ratings we actually see the Porto and Sporting lost a little a little bit whereas Befica gained a, a teeny bit Chavez and Aruca again are the two surprises and as for promotion and relegation we know Santa Clara and Passos are already down Mora Range and Farange are coming up Mora Range just after one year absence and the last spot is between Maritimo and Estrella de Amadora, who actually won the uh, first leg, the second leg is coming next week. Check whoever will will be in there. I am probably not going to do a video on that because I have no way of seeing that one. But it will be interesting to see a new team in Portugal as well. Although I actually would miss Mariti Maritimo uh, a teeny bit. Let's go over to Spain. Uh, second to last round. I mean, uh, Real Madrid Sevilla was just pushed forward because of the uh, Europa League final. What did not matter much. Real Madrid getting 2 1 win. As I expected, Almeria and Valladolid play out a nil nil draw because neither one of them could afford to lose. However, that meant that Valladolid still were on the outside looking in. Um, when it uh, because we had also Cardiff winning against Celta, and at that point, you were you need, really need to be worried, worried about Celta. But hey, I'm wearing Celta, they survived. Uh, we had Getafe getting a huge win over Osasuna, not only huge in terms of the relegation battle, but also huge for the last uh European spot, the conference league, because uh. Also, Sona losing if Bilbao would, would have won, they would have gotten it, but Bilbao managed to lose against last place Elche. Not good. And then a rather, rather, rather controversial 2 2 between Valencia and Espanyol. This was the last ditch effort for es es Espanyol, who actually had a 2 1 lead. Should have made it, Th should have been 3 1. However, there was a foul given on the goalkeeper. It was not even a push. They were jumping and. Uh, the goalkeeper, the momentum of the goalkeeper carried him into the player and then Lino gets the equalizer. Espanyol, after they, what they have suffered against Atleti uh, or, or already in the previous round and now this, they, are in serious, they seriously uh, feel disadvantaged by the referees. But that equalizer sealed that Espanyol were going down. Something I honestly didn't really want to have happened, but it looked inevitable for quite a while. And then on the last day, yes, Espanyol were down, but there were six teams that all could go down. Still with a head-to-head -head between Valladolid and Getafe, with the winner staying in, Getafe having, of course, with a nil-nil, a slightly better chance of staying. But first off, Osasuna with a 2-1, uh, two Budimir goals, former last player, secure their conference league spot. Uh, Real Madrid managed a 1-1 um, against um, Athletic Club, who were hoping they missed the penalty in the 10th minute, and Sunset gives them the lead. However, another penalty for Karim Benzema gets the equalizer, and Benzema says goodbye to the Bernabeu after 14 years. That's unbelievable. Uh, being, you know, most of the time a secondary uh, star he leaves, leaves as the star of the team, especially after the last run, um, and probably goes to Saudi Arabia, which, yeah, not too happy about that. I understand that he he can leave. It's all fair if he gets the money. That's all fair. I'm, I don't, I'm not envying that. I just don't like that Saudi so Arabia is now trying to build a more or less a retirement league of former superstar and throwing away uh, too much money. But that's beside it. Uh, as I said, Real Sociedad also give their, um, I think, uh, most of the time even captain, a uh, good send-off with a 2-1 over Sevilla. So they are in a Champions League, huge celebrations. Betis 
uh, were not in trouble. And now we're going into the five games that decided the relegation and uh, relegation uh, part where uh, Betis very soon got the one lead uh, through Ayose Perez. Um, and then uh, Diego Lopez does equalize late on. But the way the other games were going, it was rather clear that uh, Betis and Val that Valencia is overall safe, even if they would have lost. Joaquin came off in the 60th minute to thundering applause. They made a good, uh, great TIFO uh, ahead of that. So uh, very emotional there. Also, Yunis Musa with a really, really stupid challenge uh, gets himself a red card and sent off. Celta get a huge win over Barca. Barca is more or less on the beach. Yes, Frank Hesse could have given them the lead, but it was a clear offside. And then it's two goals by a youngster, Vega, who is also leaving. So again, another good buy there. Uh, give them a 2-0 lead and Celta were safe. Because if they would have lost that one, then you would have really, really, really wor worried about them. Ansu Fati fortunately gets one back. So uh, Ansu Fati is getting back into, into the groove, having already scored at the last play uh, game at the camp. Now, we, we, which I didn't really much talk about uh, before because it didn't really matter. But yeah, this was the last Barca are leaving the camp now for at least a year, a year and a half, which in the way also seems a little a little bit wrong. I don't want to... I'm not looking forward to them uh, going to the more, uh, more week in a way. Uh, another game that ultimately did not matter was uh, between Elche and Cardiff, where uh, Cardiff took an early lead in the 10th minute. Elche had two goals disallowed uh, and both of them, you know, yes, were offside calls, but you could feel with them. Elche really wanted to uh, not uh, exit La Liga with a loss. They get the equalizer through Boyer. Um, and that was that. I mean, he, again, if Elche wins, Cadiz could have gone down. But there were other results going their way. So it came down between Almeria, Valladolid and Getafe. And what happened in Valladolid was very much conditioned by what happened with, uh, uh, with Espanyol and Almeria. Uh, because the trick was uh, Valladolid and Getafe could live with a draw if Espanyol beat Almeria. And you could feel this in the stadium that the two times that Espanyol took the lead, that Valladolid especially, who needed to do something. I mean, they tried, but uh, it was all timid and, uh, you know, they seemed like uh, stalled by the, the weight of the situation. And then they were hoping that they maybe get some help from uh, uh, Barcelona. Do you go forward? Do you not go, go, go forward? In the end, it was too little and they only played nil-nil. But it was there because um, right after that, it was 1-1. Right after the half, uh, Pierre um, Gabriel gives Espanyol the lead and a really nice goal by Mbarb. Uh, gives Almeria the equalizer. They are safe again. However, uh, Caleosho in the 73rd minute puts uh, Espanyol in the lead again. At that point, Almeria would, would, would have been down and the, the draw between the lead and Getafe would be fine. Uh, also, has, has been said, there were two... Uh, uh, two yellow cards given for Al Al Almeria for, for simulation in, in, in the box and there would have been a third one. However, it turns out this was a penalty and it's really a matter of perspective. If you look at it from the main camera, it really looks like, like a foul. The player is looking for it. If you look at it from the behind the goal, it is unfortunately a foul. And Barba steps up, makes it 3-3. Almeria safe and Valladolid are down and Ronaldo very, very sad. This is his second re re relegation as a pre as a president. I really hope he's in for the, for the long run. And maybe you know this Valladolid team is the one with probably the sm one of the smallest budgets in La Liga, so it's really hard for them to survive in there. I love the jerseys. I really like the club overall, so I'm really sad to see them go. And so we have here the final standings in La Liga: Valladolid, Espanyol, Elche going down. Celta with that win jump from 17th, so on the cusp of being relegated up to 13th. Also, Mallorca finished a very credible ninth spot. This has been a little bit uh, going undercover for, for me. Also, Suna secure the Conference League. We have Villarreal and Betis uh, going to Europa League and the top four. We knew for a while already. And so here is the season summary for La Liga. We have Champions Cup uh, Barcelona, 
a championship that I already said uh, quite some things about. I'm. It's curious how they will handle now the financial situations uh, from that. Real Madrid win the cup, kind of salvaged the season. But if you already look here, uh, according to preseason, uh, it was a little bit of a di di disappointing season for Real Madrid. But I think they were majorly hampered that they had to play so many games, especially right after the World Cup break, where most of their stars were also present. So that was must must not have been easy for them. Another disappointing season, of course, for Sevilla and also for Athletic Club, who probably should should have made it in, into Europe. Villarreal, we said, will finish top four. They didn't really. Um, we have Elche, Espanyol, Valladolid going down. Coming up is Granada. Well, at least I have a jersey from one team that that's coming up. We have Las Palmas. So the Canary Islands will be represented again. And then it's a playoff where we had at the semifinals in the first one, Levante beat Albacete away from home. So it looks like Levante will be in uh, the final and then it's between Eibar and Alaves, a Basque Derby. In a way, it ended 1-1 the first leg and then it, it goes now back to Alaves. So uh, that will be interesting who will come up. Seems like uh, teams, except for Al Albacete, all three of them have, the other three others have been recently in uh, La Liga. And I give you also the change in, in, in the ratings here. The big winners are Girona, recently promoted. But then there's also Real Sociedad, who really sticks out on the negative side. Of course, Sevilla and the three uh, relegated teams. That was it. Season is over for Spain and for Portugal. Gotta say, um, this year I was not so much into these leagues. Um, I have to say it a little bit, of, uh, there was something missing for me overall. Uh, it was surely interesting seasons and I am really looking forward to La Liga's of, of course rebranding itself as well, which also makes it interesting seeing a new logo. Um, so yeah, much to look forward. Uh, we have five Spanish teams in the Champions League, so we will see a lot more from the Spaniards. I think next year will be a transition season. Maybe unless Messi comes comes back, but you know all the stars from the last 20, 20 years are now out of the league, and both big teams are kind of rebuilding, and that is the interesting part. That's definitely inter interesting. But I mean, how will Real Madrid replace Benzema? That will be an interesting one. Let's see. In any case, uh, as I said, that was it from La Liga for the 22-2023 season. I will probably do a preview video when the new season starts, and uh, somewhere mid-August. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon about more and La Liga coming somewhere in August. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!